How long have you for example rehearsed for the tour? Or have you? No. We're just we just fun. jam out, man. We just jam out. It is it is like this. We have a lot of fun. Whenever we get together, we haven't seen each other for like two or three weeks. We get together, it gets crazy. It is like this. Yeah. We're buddies. <laughs> we can't help it. There's nothing wrong with us having, you know what I mean? So we have some Especially fun. Especially when you see things. Zach going... <laughs> are, you, are you going to have the same sound on stage maybe as on the record? Or do you it's up, like it's up to the guy out front. We can, we can just try as hard as we, we can play it exactly the same way. But, you know, face it, the guy out front is sitting there, you know, hitting the wrong dials. I mean, it's not going to exactly <laughs> sound. You're going to have in there now. So, it is but better. Skin, he knows what he's doing, and he he makes it sound great. No, no it man. is better. It is better because it's more spontaneous, more energy. Serious energy, man. That's what this band's about. And uh, yeah, it's it's just a lot more fun to play live. Lots of botulism. Robert Palmer said in Montreux that in every band there are stereotypes, like the guitar players into women and whiskey, and the drummer is completely crazy, and the bass yeah, player just <laughs> stands behind. And wants to be invisible. Yeah, and then there is the frontman. Is it like this? <laughs> no. He's talking shit. Everyone has their own personality, you know. Well, well, I know what saying, but it's just that sucks into men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. To prove it. I'm invisible, yeah. Definitely. I have to be moisturizing. No, it changes from day to day Shut depending up. on what mood any guy in the band is in. Sometimes yeah, he'll know. be crazy, he'll be crazy. You know, and some days, you know, I'm like, we just have a bundle of fun. We just have, we just go over there. <laughs> Most nine, nine times, a, like, like for instance, we hadn't played together for six weeks before we went to Japan, and it sounded like it. The first night was a bit iffy. Oh, it was real dodgy the first night. Then I, I, as the shows got on, it got better and better. <clears throat> but it's not going to be a repeat tomorrow. When we play here because we, we, it's only been like 14 days since we played together. So we, we got in there tomorrow afternoon and we'll have a jam. It's going to be great. Is the first or the last gig of the tour usually the best? Which of them? You know what it is? Every gig, you know, the thing is, we go out with this attitude like to have fun. You know, put it this way we don't go out and go, hey, are we going to play exactly right tonight? It's just like, hey man, let's just go out and have fun. Until we. <laughs> Laugh at each other, you know what I mean? Spit on the each other. The thing is, Zach, spit on each other. Hell. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It, it's just like, let's have some fun. Hell yeah. was on the baggage ticket, and that's what we're going to give him. No, the, the bottom line with this band is to have a good time. And, and if we're not having a good time, it's not worth doing it. So that's what we're here for. We're doing it. So you here for it. How does the, the, this tour, for example, differ from your first Black Sabbath tour? What are the main differences? Well, let's <laughs> <laughs> For example, with Mendon. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Yeah, five years Black Sabbath. What are the main differences between this tour and, for example, Wait your and first see. I, I mean, everyone always tries to analyze. The way we play, we play the way we play is the way we play on the night. It's sometimes good, it's sometimes terrible, it's sometimes great. You can never predict. We always hope that we're going to play great. Sometimes power cuts, sometimes things yeah, happen. Mechanical failures, but I mean yeah, we're yeah. doing the best we can. We're going to be Berlin right? tomorrow. What has been the worst gig of your lives? Helsinki tomorrow night. Helsinki tomorrow night. When they bombed Hiroshima. Oh, man. No, no. You can't say it. Sometimes they're real bad, sometimes they're really good. Bombs, you know, bombs. you know, you know. Some, sometimes I'll come and start, I'm thinking, I'll, I'll, I'll say, that was a terrible gig. And people are going to come to me and going, oh, Ozzy, that was so good. You, you can't, because we, we have a fallback system on stage. We don't hear what goes out front. We're here monitors, you know. We're here monitors, so, you know. For all we, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, the sound on record is live. You know, I've seen some shows where I go, man, that really sucked, you know what I mean? Uh, because it didn't sound like the record. And the thing is, the band probably had the, the record sound up on stage. Same amps, everything they used on the record. But the thing is, if the guy isn't controlling out front, isn't controlling it right, you know, he's got, like, let's say, um, the guitar whacking up there, and you can't hear the guy singing, 
and then you can't really hear the drums that good, and the bass is booming. You know, it's just like, this doesn't sound remotely close, but what we're playing up front, it, we're, no one's louder than anybody, and we're probably up front, we're hearing a great sound, you know, and we're rocking out, getting into it, and it's just like, and up front it could be like, you know, why don't these guys just leave the stage, you know, it really sucks. The best thing we can do is to try to have a great time on stage and play with each other on stage. And express that, and if we're good on stage, it's going to come through up front. What do you think of Udo? How did you get in touch with him, and why did you choose him? He's for cool. Your He's cool, man. Is um, I met, I met, I, I played um, with Udo when he was here, except yeah, about four years ago. Uh, I haven't seen he told Udo. us today. <laughs> I haven't seen Udo since, since those days that I'm looking forward to playing with him again. He looks great. He's got a great voice. Yeah. I've got all these albums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been wearing the Miracle Man video. Did you have any practical difficulties in making it? With all those... <laughs> there was pig shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I wiped out one time. I did a massive spinal tap. Mm. Right in the pig shit. And they were licking my bell bottoms. It was pissing me off, but... Things I, w I wiped out. All I was worried about was my guitar. But, see, you know, see, the thing it's is, fun though. It's how much fun, do you? That's his how much do you plan the videos, <laughs> or do you let somebody else to direct them over? I have a director. My wife. <laughs> how about the crazy babies? It's a very much different from the videos you've done before. My wife. <laughs> and the choir boys. By the way, I, I, did you meet the choir boys while they were in L.A.? Yes. Did they ever get out of there? Yes. Good. We saw them when they were leaving there in London. And we never saw them since. If you could change one thing in the rock and roll business, apart from interviews, what would it be? The <coughs> That was good. The guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> What would it be? I think what's going to happen eventually, MTV is going to burn itself out. And it's going to go. I, I hope to think that we'd go get right back to basics. But I don't think it will do. Because because when Geezer and I were playing, and, and suppose Randy. In the early days, it was like a mystique. There's no mystique anymore. You mean like you, you, you now make a record and you, you're visual. I mean, for, for many years, a lot of American people thought that Black Sabbath were from San Francisco.